Hello and welcome to Abito Move African Music where African meets real. My name is Eddie Kavai and my guest today, she's a very amazing lady by the way. You should see her. She's dressed wow. Ladies <laughs> <laughs> and gentlemen, we are here at Kenya Music Week. So if you hear a bit of noise around, we are the summit and people are talking music and music only. So today I've met this lady, she's from Honduras. Ladies and gentlemen, Ewe, Echo Bugara, Omonia la Guana Mama Kenya Irawo. This week we meet one Irani, a Honduran native and a Latino jazz sensation. She has spent most of her life as a volunteer in various organizations across the globe, impacting every society she resides in. Wani believes that music and arts in its purest form can move individuals and societies to live fulfilling lives and lead a peaceful coexistence. This is the premise of her founding, Moving Cultures and its subsidiary programs like Women of the World Talk and Act Annual Conference and Cultural Stopovers. She works with local nonprofits to help set up long term sustainability projects. Organizations in Kenya, such as Magoso School in Kibera and Kariobangi Women Promotion Training Institute, or KWPTI in Kariobangi, are key beneficiaries of her direction. We are granting this package of information to the leader of Kariobangi Women Training Center. Let's get to know a little bit more about one. Nice to meet you, Eddie. Hi. Thank you. How have you been? Very well. Thank you for having me in your program. So where were you born? I was born in Tegucigalpa, also another difficult name, the capital of Honduras, a, a small country in Central America, very close to Mexico. So as you can see, my mother tongue is Spanish, <laughs> and English is my second, second language. Ah, so you're a Latino? I'm a Latin American, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So how did you find yourself in Africa? Yeah, you know, uh, uh, Africa is my home. I'm an Afro-descendant um, due to my, the work of my husband, who is in development and the international cooperation. We change countries every five years. And we have our first experience in Africa in 1997 till 2001, living in Zimbabwe, in Harare. And then every four, five years, we move to different countries. And it's a great blessing because it's a way to keep the world on your pocket. Mm. Because you move around the world, you link through arts, mm. because people who sing and dance are good people. <laughs> you know? Very good people. Yeah, they're really good people. Yeah. And it's a great opportunity to link with the roots of the community who is hosting you. Mm. So this is, Africa for me is home. Yeah. So you're an artist, you're a music producer. Mm -hmm. um, or else, I, I don't know, you have a lot of titles. Yeah, I think it's not necessarily a lot of titles, but um, I'm being educated in the base of a triangle uh -huh. that is actually connected with knowledge, service to the community, you know, and spirituality. So when you believe in something and you have faith and passion, that is your engine to link to any aspiration or anything that you would like to pursue. In community service is actually that um, space where time is always moving because culture is it's not a statical. It's about transformation. And having a gift, a voice for singing or a talent of playing, playing an instrument or using your hands to create these beautiful things that you see here is only an opportunity to grow with the people around you. So I find myself as an artist, not as a singer, because artist is become a complex and has become complete. It's, it's holistic. 
such an amazing voice. Thank you. <laughs> so what inspires your kind of music? Like I was telling you before, uh, voice is only an expression of your experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, singing is a way of delivering a message. Mm -hmm. It's about uh, telling stories through sounds that come specifically from different cultures. Yeah, so um, I think it's not really about aesthetics, it's more about connection. And music is this, this greater way of being uh, present. Painting a canvas has rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, counting beats and putting into a context and color and design, that's also music. Yeah. So for me, I, it's not any difference about talking to you and sharing my experiences or putting handcraft or the, uh, making the, the sketch of a production, you know, or, or working with entrepreneurial women and children. Um, or designing, you know, this is one of, of my designs that is actually a, some kind of a shawl and, uh, and done by Cariovangi women, you know, who are also women who come from very difficult situations. And they have to learn that it's not the material money who makes things happen, it's talent. And music is the first part of it because we all sound in a specific way. <laughs> So you're also empowering women. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I don't think I'm empowering women. I think it's only uh, sitting like you and me and discussing what I can do better and what I have been doing and how can I find a way to feel in a different position. And um, I learn a lot from all the beneficiaries of my projects and they learn a lot from, from us because I, I'm not alone. I'm a, a huge... A group of energy and people from different fields, you know, from journalism, from handcraft, from politics, from science, from uh, economics. As <laughs> everybody in our group, you know, from design. So it's amazing to see all that group of people volunteering, you know, and helping to change the mindset of a lot of, of women in the community. So we're going to take a short break. When we come back, I know probably my viewers are wondering what's all this. Yes, like. I'm very excited. Also <laughs> looking forward for that part. So we'll talk about this and also, you know, about music in Africa. You know, yes. I, I, I don't know how how it was. You know. In Honduras. Yes. In my country. <laughs> <laughs> in Honduras. <laughs> we'll talk about that after the break. Welcome back to Abit and of course I'm still with Wani here. <laughs> you know, I'm still I'm, here. <laughs> so before the break I was asking you um, how, well, how, how music was you know, when in, you were starting in, up in Honduras. In Honduras? Yes. Ah, that's, a, a, that's a beautiful question Eddie. Uh, I come from a family of artists and uh, musicians and scientists and people from different brands again. Mm -hmm. And I started taking music lessons when I was seven years old. I was learning how to play the piano. Uh -huh. At the same time, I was going to the ballet uh, school. Like I mentioned to you, we were educated uh -huh. as in a triangle. There is knowledge, spirituality, community service. So since the moment we were very little, we were engaged into dance and music academically, uh -huh. besides the regular syllabus. And your parents were very supportive on this, right? Yeah, because there's three or four generations of my family operating on the same level. Are you making money out of music? Yes, I do. I did it mainly in the past. Now I do I still have some corporate events that pay me very well. But it doesn't have to do for, with me being a musician. It's about delivering something that the client wants. Mm -hmm. I do Latin American music that is actually well accepted in a certain way that is quite global. 
you know, and I'm quite welcome in all these international settings and local settings as well, because it's more uh, connected to delivery and the truth and excellence. It's 1% talent and 99% work. I train vocally almost every day, you know, I'm very disciplined you know, about my performances also, uh, on the way I, I connect and I, I do my work. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you, improvisation sometimes is being taken of, um, as a way of doing things on your way. It's true, but you need to know which way. Awesome. So, um, you know, we have, we, have, we, we have decorated this table with yes. a lot of artifacts. Yeah, <laughs> let's get all the goodies out. So, uh, this is what you do. You also, Actually, um, I don't do this. Um, one of my projects that is called Moving Cultures, that is the platform of all these uh, different friends mm -hmm. who come from different backgrounds, uh, is supporting artisans. Mm -hmm. You know, and the profits of the work of the artisans usually go to different causes. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have here um, Urban Punk, mm -hmm. that is collaborating with a fashion designer mm -hmm. that is called Baishali. And she is the one, uh, after the urban punk is this makes, a this is her, um, it's, a, it's a canvas, mm -hmm. it becomes a canvas. Oh, okay. So, you know, it's, it's the way you upgrade the regular bag, oh. you know. And, uh, and it's beautiful because it's customized, it's, uh, it's all the energy of this artist put into the, into the work. Uh, of course, you can buy a lot of Chinese things, <laughs> but the Chinese things not necessarily have the print and the signature. Yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. and this is um, oh yeah, it has yeah. a signature. Yeah, because it's a canvas. This is a, this is like it's like you wearing a paint a a, a, piece, a piece of art with you. You know, while, oh, while you walk yeah. there, it looks and good on you. Yeah, it is amazing. See? <laughs> this is great. So, um, how much do they go? For? I mean. Uh, the ones with the canvas, they cost mm -hmm. 2,500, mm -hmm. you know, and I think yeah. some of these ones cost 2,000. Oh, okay. yeah? And then we, we have here the bead work mm -hmm. that is very, very beautiful and well known in Kenya and in other African countries. Yeah. But the amazing thing about this specific work mm -hmm. is that it's done by boys who are um, out of school. But due to the lack of possibilities to go into the School, university, yeah. they receive training to, to. to do the bidding and become uh, entrepreneurs. Mm. So in this project actually is run by uh, one of my volunteers and friends and colleagues called Kesia Murugi. And uh, the brand is called Lola Galore. And they're supporting children's and the children's garden home in Kawangare. Is this Kawangware? Kawangware. Almost. Now we go to these other little Kanga cosmetic bags, uh, you know, uh -huh. that they're made. But all these are for ladies, oh, they're, right? They're, yeah, they're all... I mean, uh, what about us, man? Yeah, no, but we also have for men. Mm, okay. in, um, in Magoso school, where mm -hmm. they do the kanga in Kenyan materials, they do beautiful uh, shirts and, ah. and blouses for, for uh, men, you know, and different. If also, you can customize suits and trousers. Mm. And the money for uh, the profits of this project in Magoso mm -hmm. goes to the school uh, who is hosting 600 kids. You know, they're winners at the national level in the singing and dancing competition. Mm -hmm. And they have rescued a lot of street kids, you know, from uh, difficult living conditions. They stimulate their talents, mm -hmm. they boost their self-confidence, mm -hmm. and even let them understand how valuable it is to live in Kibera and become proud mm -hmm. of your origins. Mm -hmm. And then from Kibera, you can go somewhere else, but if you're not proud of your origins, you will never recognize how important you are. Yeah, yeah, should so. be proud. Obama mm -hmm. is proud. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the key. So if, if, if I want to customize my suit, how yeah. much will it cost me? Mm, that will depend on the materials, mm -hmm. on the design, on the complexity of the design. But it, they, it can go from 3000 to 5000 depending. You know, so it, it, it can go higher than that also. Kenyan shillings, right? Yeah, we're talking about Kenyan okay. shillings. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about Kenyan shillings. <laughs> talking about USD. Yes, no. <laughs> that would be actually like Dolce Gabbana or, you know, <laughs> Valentino. <laughs> so we take a short break again and when we come back, I mean, I want, I want us to discuss about the kind of challenges you faced, you know, 
mm -hmm. being in Africa and doing all these projects with yeah. all these guys. Right? That will be great to talk about that. Yeah. We'll be right back. Besame, besame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Besame, besame mucho, que tengo miedo a tenerte y perderte otra vez. Quiero tenerte muy cerca, mirarme en tus ojos, verte junto a mí. Piensa que tal vez mañana yo ya estaré lejos, muy lejos de ti. Bésame. Bésame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Bésame, bésame mucho, que tengo miedo a tenerte y perderte. Otra vez. Como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Bésame, bésame mucho. Que tengo miedo a tenerte y perderte otra vez. Verme junto a ti, piensa que tal vez mañana yo ya estaré lejos, muy lejos de ti. Bésame, bésame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última vez. <laughs> but like I said to you, I think it's about uh, Besame Mucho is one of these most remarkable and known songs, not only in Latin America and the whole world, because it's, it's so committed into the engagement of life. Mm. You know, it's like I'm there, I'll be there, and this is how Latin American people are. We are so passionate about mm -hmm. the way we do things and the way we communicate.
been lacking words. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say next. <laughs> but anyway, mm. now um you know moving moving, moving around cultures. Africa. Yeah, know. moving cultures. It's like mm. moving cultures, moving yeah. around Africa. You were trying to ask me uh, why, what is my perception of living in, in Africa and the challenges I I face in Africa. I will not say there is an African thing because I have lived in the five continents and um, each one of them have a specific way of uh, dealing with uh, aspects of life. And uh, one of them is the music industry and how the mu music industry can be perceived also as a way of supporting other kind of projects. Now you see goodwill ambassadors all over the world. You know, I'm also a goodwill ambassador for Plan International, mm -hmm. you know, uh, supporting the, their campaigns about the girls mm -hmm. and their rights and the women's rights and also the children's rights. I'm also a goodwill ambassador for Faraya Cancer Support Trust in Kenya. And it's about also letting people know that cancer it doesn't affect only black people or Indian people or Kenyan people or Chinese people. It's everyone has that possibility. And um, embracing those challenges in each society has to do with your capacity of being aware how things are done there. I don't move every country and I come with the baggage of the culture I left. I have to observe. I go, I see it, I understand, and when I understand how things are done, I engage. And the, and the, the, child, the risk of feeling uh, less affected about your work is, 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 is minor. Because I learned this after 30 years of doing this kind of job. So it's, it's not that it comes intrinsically on my mind, it's because through the processes of changing constantly, you also change the way you do things. So challenges are there, will always be there. A skepticism, you know from that country and also the, the, the way the people see you or perceive you. But if you go with an open heart and with truth, things always work. Because uh, you cannot lie about the things. Okay. You know, uh, actions are louder than, than words. You know, I can be talking and then my actions are actually not resonating with the message I'm delivering. Mm. And uh, I'm a true believer that whatever you say, you have to do it. So I don't um, engage my commitments and myself in things that I'm not going to, to do. I'm a doer, so if I tell you I'll meet you tomorrow, I'll meet you tomorrow. Mm. So out of the five continents, which, which is your best continent? The, all of them, because they're so different. Mm. You know, it's so different. And it's actually giving more perspective to your life. You know, if I'm in Europe, because my husband is Austrian, I take all the advantages of that society and I put it into my everyday activities. If I'm in Latin America, I embrace all these beautiful elements of passion and expression and the hands, you know. And, <laughs> you know, if I'm in India, I connect very much into this moment of peace and serenity and meditation. If I'm in Africa, you know, it's about stepping on the floor, you know, and, 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 and being there. So it's, it, I cannot, I, I honestly, that question is being placed into my plate <laughs> all the time. And yeah. all of them have great things and all of them have challenges, like we all do. Yeah. So okay. do you live in Africa? Or we right are now? in temporary basis, but I live in Africa because I'll be here another two years probably. We, we arrived here in 2014, but our host countries are our countries. We don't believe being Honduran or Austrian like my husband is what makes us what we are. We are in Kenya, it's our host country, and this is why I engage in this kind of projects. Because if my host country is facing difficulties, I'm not going to sit and complain. I'm going to come with a proposal that will help us to be, to be, to be better. You know, yeah. This is what I do everywhere I go. So I don't lose time just saying, ah, you know, Kenyans, they do things. No, we all do things in different ways. Yeah. Yeah? Let's come with a proposal. And this is what I always ask to people. Are you complaining? Come and with, with an idea. Let's change it. Mm. Any kids? You know? Yeah, I have a, a son that is 27 years old. He was born in Honduras and raised in Zimbabwe, Colombia, India. And, and now he's uh, living in Austria. I mean, he's working in the hospitality industry. Ah. My daughter, that she's 17, she's with us. She was born in Zimbabwe and raised in Colombia, in India, in Panama, and now she's back in Kenya. 
She speaks, all my kids speak Spanish, German, and English. And my daughter just came from her exchange here in China, so she speaks a little bit of Chinese. <laughs> you know, and they're all very much engaged into art as a way of dealing with their emotions and communicating. So they're artists, you know, in, 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 in their own right. No, I, I would love to continue this conversation, but time. Yes, time. but before you finish, yeah. Eddie, I want to invite you, everybody, to the Cultural Stoppers. It's an initiative under Moving Cultures that is uplifting all the subculture of Nairobi. And we want to place Nairobi as the cultural city of Africa. You are literally marking it. Yes, the... and it's mapping the city with all the venues that for the last 10, 15 years are doing art, restaurants, bars, mm -hmm. cultural centers, cinemas, uh, everybody that it has something to say. Even yeah. you sitting in your living room and saying, oh, let's call all my friends and talk about soccer. That is a cultural stopover. It's about the 27th of February 2016. Everybody has to go and do something from 8 o'clock in the morning till midnight. So it's called Sports, Arts and Culture. Take Nairobi for a day. Be there. <laughs> Find us on YouTube and Twitter, Instagram, Facebook as Cultural Stopovers Kenya. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to the show. Thank, Thank you, you so Eddie. Much. Thank you. I wish we had all the time to, you know, to continue talking. <laughs> yeah. well, we will do it out of the set. Out of the set. <laughs> <laughs> that has been one on Abbe this week. From me, Eddie Kavai, and the entire Abbe team. Till next week, people, say. Thank you for catching the beat on Abbey. Let us know what you think of today's featured artist or who you'd like to see on the future episodes. Talk to us on Twitter, check out our Facebook page, and you can also contact us using the email address on the screen. <laughs> Piensa que tal vez mañana yo ya estaré lejos, muy lejos de ti. Bésame, bésame mucho, como si fuera.